Okay, we are live. Uh, just, so just a quick heads up. Uh, the military is doing some training in my area. So if you hear the occasional boom, do not be surprised. It is not the 4th of July. It is the military. Uh, so today, on the, according to the Trello, it looks like the next thing up is the leaderboard. Um, so let's, let me just open it up again real quick and just make sure, but I'm pretty sure it was leaderboard AI and, uh, pets, which kind of fits under the AI category. So let's just take a quick look. Yeah. All right. So leaderboard is first. I don't think that's going to be too much work. Uh, last video we did respawning, um, health UI and, and showing health and all that stuff. So we, we have a way to uh manage hitting other players now we just need some kind of leaderboard so let's go ahead and uh first make the ui for that because we can't have a leaderboard if we don't have a ui right so i'm going to make a new ui and um sorry if the text looks a little funny i don't know if you guys can see it but um it looks a little bold on my screen, but that's probably because I'm running at a 1080 resolution for the stream, but this is actually a high resolution monitor. Um, for those of you that are unaware, my old monitor uh, decided to give up on me. So I ended up getting a, a newer, better one. Uh, let me know if you have any problems seeing the screen and I'll see what I can do. All right, so we'll call this leader board canvas. I'm just gonna adjust my mic position real quick. It's kind of in my way, there we go leader board canvas uh so i'm gonna make a new script here or i actually copied the health script i'm just gonna call it leaderboard canvas and i'm gonna open that up all right gotta move that over to my other screen here there we go all right so i'm going to of course i'm gonna enlarge this i know last time uh, some people said it was too small. So I go, now that's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to rename this to leaderboard canvas. And uh, a lot of this code is not going to apply. I thought I might need some of it, but I don't think I will. Let's go back to the leaderboard canvas here on the actual editor. And I'm going to essentially just uh, design the leaderboard, I suppose. So let's make a new UI element. Um, this will probably be a, I'm gonna do scroll view because I know that'll have a lot of what I need, even though I'm not gonna actually have a scroll view. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on designing this because it's kind of outside the scope of mirror, but I will show you very quickly how to do these sorts of things. Uh, so I got rid of the scroll view entirely. Uh, I have the viewport area, which is invisible. Um, got a mask graphic. I'm going to click show mask graphic just so that we can see it. Uh, it's kind of, it's there, but it's like really, really small. Uh, so we're going to put that over here. The leaderboard is going to be constant for now. I'm not going to, I'm not going to add tab or anything like that. This is, you know, right to the point. Uh, so for the content, I'm going to add a grid, uh, sorry, I'm going to add a vertical layout group. It's actually been a while since I've worked with things like this. This is kind of stuff that doesn't get done very often. And I need to add, I'm going to make this for now fill, but I'm going to make it sit in the top left corner. Um, okay, well... I'm not going to worry about it being larger right this moment. I'm going to create a new UI element and it's going to be a uh, raw image and this would be entry. And this is what actually matters for the size. And under the entry, it's going to have a uh, text mesh pro and I'm going to uh, size it to the full, full size of this entry. And I'm going to just move it over this way a little bit. And obviously the text is way too big. Um, player name, let's auto size it. And 
it's still way too big. Let's do six. Uh, let's change the color to black so that we can actually see it. And I'm just gonna make it align uh, to the left center and that should be fine. I'm going to, again, just move this over a tiny bit. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna actually name it player name. And I'm gonna copy it and this is gonna be score. And this score is basically gonna be the same thing. Uh, but I'm gonna move it over here and then put it right here. And it's just gonna say zero. I'm gonna actually align this one to the right though. There we go. All right, so we kind of have like an entry element here. This is gonna be our player name and our score. It's disgusting looking, but it will get the job done. Uh, now I need to add a uh, layout element component. This indicates that's part of a layout. And it is because the content is a vertical layout group. Now we had the other issue where this is clearly not the right size. So we're going to add a content size fitter. We're going to change vertical fit because that's the one that goes, that's how it goes is up and down to preferred size, which will resize it to fit the elements. Uh, so if I click it now, you can see it's, it's fit to the element. If I add a new element, you can see it's now fit to the new element. So maybe you learned something there. I know a lot of people struggle with these, but that's, they're pretty straightforward once you get the hang of them. Uh, now I need to make a prefab and this entry is just going to be player score. Um, yeah, it's going to call it player score and it's going to need a script. Uh, so let's just do a new script. I'm going to call it player score. And this is where we're actually getting into making the leaderboard happen. Uh, the UI work is partially done. It's mostly done, but uh, pretty close. So uh, first we need a public um, network connection. And I'm gonna call this uh, connection. And uh, next we need a private string player name and we need a private uh, integer technically it could be like a un because your scores well your score could be negative so we'll just say integer and I'll be score now default to zero and as a default to string dot empty and I'll make a couple methods here yes I see the little warning All right, so now I need some serialized fields real quick. And this is going to be name. This is going to be score. So these are just the text fields for um, name and score. All right, so I don't think I actually need uh, this here. So I'm just gonna do name text dot text equals name. I'm gonna do public void set uh, score and score. I'm thinking I should probably change this a little bit differently. I'm gonna do public void add score and value. So this will be uh, score plus equals value. And I'm just gonna do score text dot text equals score dot to string. You don't normally have to do uh, two string in Unity. This is basically casting the integer to a string, but in every other principle, you probably will. Um, so I just do it out of habit. All right. Um, now I just need to go ahead and slap that on the prefab real quick. I got a message uh, not related to the stream, so I'm going to go ahead and disregard it for now. And I'm going to take this player score script and just attach it onto my uh, player score entry. And I'm going to assign the serialized fields. All right, so now that is set up. Did I make a prefab? No, I did not. So I need to go ahead and do that. And this is now a prefab. Um, gonna go ahead and delete it. And I need to make a new script. I am actually going to go ahead and just make a new folder.
Oops, didn't mean to open that back up. All right, so I'm gonna make a new script and I'm gonna call it, uh, actually, I already have a script for that. Where did it go? This is gonna go under leaderboard, the leaderboard canvas script. Okay, so I'm gonna drop that here. Um, now I'm gonna go back and open that up. What is Mirror? Oh man, you're in the wrong stream. <laughs> Mirror is a networking solution. Um, and that's basically what this series is on is getting started with Mirror. So serialized field, private transform content. This is the uh, content object at which I'll spawn my prefabs, my player score prefabs. Private uh, player score prefab. This is my player score prefab that I'll spawn. And um, I don't need the health thing anymore. I shouldn't need any of this. Delete. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Public void um, player joined. Just trying to think here. Network connection. Con. I actually do need events here. Uh, I don't know if I have something for that yet. I don't think I do. Let me just check something. Okay, so I do have a custom network manager already set up. I must have started that in a different video. Uh, right now, I have a way to track local players. That was for my client instance. Now, I do want some events. Uh, Mirror doesn't come with events out of the box. It uses overrides and you have to basically make your own events, which kind of not ideal. I feel like it should absolutely 100% come with these events out of the box without you having to make them, but it does not. Um, so we're going to do action. Sorry, we're going to do event action. So let's see, it's an event, but it's an action. Um, and we're going to pass in network connection and it's going to be uh, relay on server add player. So basically what's going to happen, actually let me have some comments here. Dispatched when a player joins the server. I think there's, I don't think this is the right name. So I'm probably gonna have to rename that. So I'm gonna do dispatched when a player leaves the server. All right, so let's go ahead and go to uh, void on server add player. Um, so now I'm going to do relay on server add player, question mark, dot invoke, passing in the connection. Basically what happens here is um, if there's anything listening to the event, it will invoke it, passing in the connection for the player that was added. Uh, yeah, so it's actually on server disconnect, which is, which would personally irk me. Uh, okay, it does irk me. Because <laughs> you have on server disconnect, which is the opposite of on server add player. Or maybe there is, no, there is an on server connect. Okay, so I was, I suppose it should have like a on um, server remove player, but that doesn't actually exist. So that's what's missing is there should be an on server remove player, but Mirror doesn't actually have that in. Okay, so whatever. Um, I'm gonna do on server remove player, passing in a connection that removed. That's assuming, oops, question mark dot invoke, passing in the player that was removed. So this is like the same thing, but the other event. And I'm gonna actually rename this event. Did I not have event action before? I don't know. I, I don't know where that code was. I'll have to kind of go back to that. If the question mark checks if there's a uh, any listeners to the event and it'll only do the invoke if there are listeners because uh, it's basically a null check. You can't invoke an event that's, that's null because there's no listeners. Uh, so that's all that is basically. All right, so leaderboard canvas um 
right now this is a mono behavior, but we need to be able to send messages to clients. Um, I wonder if you can pass, yeah, you can pass over a network connection in an RPC, right? I don't think I've ever tried. We're going to try and see what happens. Uh, so this is going to be a network behavior. It's funny because I've been working with Mirror for like over a year now, and I think I've never tried to pass in a network connection. I know you can do it for like target RPCs, but I don't know if you can do it as a parameter. I assume you can though, um, but we're going to find out. So first I'm going to do private override. Oh, it needs to be public. You can't override private. Public override on start server. Uh, so when the server starts, I'm going to do getting started network manager dot on server add player. Ah, and the tab is working. <laughs> um, one second, reading a question. Uh, you mirror is actually only dedicated servers, so. Hope that answers your question. Uh, public override on stop server. And I'm just going to take this. I'm going to do getting started. Oh, gosh. This is why I try not to multitask because I get so sidetracked. Um, I want to add an event for both add player and on server disconnect. And then on stop server, I want to remove those events. Because if you know much about C sharp events, events, you should know that whenever you subscribe, you also have to unsubscribe when you destroy um, the subscribing object. Otherwise, bad things will happen. All right. So uh, what we're going to basically do is the server isn't going to actually um, track the leaderboard. I don't, I don't see why the server would need to because that information is going to be uh, basically dumped at the end of the server. Uh, so we might as well just store it only on clients. Uh, so with that said, I need a private void um, RPC thinking here. Um, player disconnected, network connection con. Again, I don't know if this is gonna work. So we're gonna find out. Called on clients when a player disconnects from the server. All right, uh, so we're gonna leave that. We're gonna copy it. And then we're going to do this. We're gonna do on player connected. Called on clients when a player connects to the server. All right, so very easily, all we're gonna do here is basically take these relays and I'm just gonna switch the order here, which are just events uh, from the network manager. Whenever, whenever a connection is uh, joining the server, we're just going to do RPC player connected object. And there are, there are other ways to do this, and I would probably go about this a different way in a big project. Um, but in order to do so, I'd have to make a lot of um, like injection and stuff and, and references and things like that. And that's going to be way complicated for someone getting started. So we're going to go this route for now. Is that the right method? RPC player disconnected object. Okay. So basically on the server, keep in mind these are called on the server because I'm doing it under on start server. Whenever a player joins the server, it's going to tell all players that that player joined. And whenever they leave, it's going to tell all players that that player le left the uh, server. And we're not actually using this right now. So I'm going to just real quick do debug.log, um, gut join. And I'm going to do plus uh, con. I'm going to do con dot connection ID. If there's a connection ID, I think it's safe to assume that 
it's not null. Otherwise, it will throw a null error. So we'll find out super quick. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do a quick build. And I got a build error. Um, hmm. There you go. Answers that question. Cannot pass connection over the network. All righty then. Um, so why does this pose a problem? Because what I was going to do is take my player score and uh, what I was going to do essentially is every time a player actually scores, um, I was going to grab the connection from that player on the scoring player, and I was just going to pass it into add score. So, yeah, awesome. Um, instead, I'm going to do the complete opposite of what Cooper said and probably pass in a network identity reference because, <laughs> no, that's actually exactly what um, Cooper said. So I guess I told him th about this some time ago, but I answered so many questions, I honestly don't remember a lot of them. Um, so we can't do that. All right, so let's think about this. Um, well, the player's probably gonna need a local player connection, right? We do track those. Um, I'm just trying to think of the most elegant way to do this that won't be too ugly. All right, so let's go back here and we're gonna change the public. This is the player score script, which is just the uh, leaderboard entry. So I'm gonna do public um, uint net ID. So this is gonna be the net ID for the player. Um, for this player score. Now the issue is, is that, I mean, I guess this isn't really much of an issue, but it's worth noting, is that the net ID is unique per object, not per player. Uh, so for example, if a player has three different objects that they have ownership over, there's gonna be three different net IDs. And let's say the player's pet is the one that hits the enemy. Um, we can't pass in the pet net ID because it's just going to add a whole new score entry because we want to, we want it to count towards the same score basically. Uh, so what we're going to actually do though is earlier uh, in the in the streams here, not this one particular, but the past ones, we made what's called a client instance, which is basically just a placeholder for the client. Uh, it doesn't have any. It doesn't have any visuals to it whatsoever. It's just some scripts that run about the player. So once again, I told you and I said so many times in the past that this is going to be a huge benefit because we can spawn players off from this without actually destroying a client instance and things like that. Um, another reason that this is now a huge benefit is we can use the net ID from this because this is a constant. As long as the player is connected, the client instance will exist. So. It has once again proven to be useful, and this was entirely not intentional. Um, so again, I, I strongly encourage you to make client instances as your player prefab. Um, so we're not really, not really in too hard of a spot. I think we can salvage what we got here. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is go back to this. Um, all right, so we're going. We're we're keeping all this the same. We're still going to pass in the leaderboard, and or you know we're still going to pass in a connection that's joining and leaving. But instead of trying to RPC the connection because you can't do that, um, which is silly, I really feel like you should be able to do that. I know that the connection is different because you have, um, for example, base that connection to client and server, and one will be null depending on if you're client or server. But I feel like I would make that a priority so that you could pass in connections, but what do I know? Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do instead is we're going to do um, getting started network manager dot 
local players. So these are our client instances. I could actually rename this to client instances. It might make more sense, um, but this is essentially the local player. If you're confused about the naming on that, I did talk about what the difference between a local player and author authoritative player is, and you're gonna have to go back and watch that if you wanna know, because I'm not gonna cover it again in this stream. But um, that might clarify why I'm calling it local player. Now, let's see. Um, dot try get value. So I'm gonna wrap this in an if statement. Okay, so here we go. Uh, out network identity and I. So basically what this is going to do is we're going to try and um, get the network identity that is associated as the local player for the connection that is joining. Now this is called, uh, this relay is called after I add to the local player. So it should work. Um, there's no reason that won't exist. So let's go ahead and go back. And if that is valid, then I'm going to pass in uh, the, to the RPC and I dot net ID. Um, why does it not like this? Oh, because I haven't updated this yet. So I need to just change this to a uh, uint net ID. I'm gonna do the same thing here. All right, so gut join, I'm just gonna pass in the net ID and I'm gonna do debug.log dot left plus net ID. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing here when the player disconnects. I might need to look at my code again real quick. Uh, so let's go back to the manager. All right, so this will actually cause a problem because I'm trying to pass in, uh, I'm trying to get the net ID from the local players uh, after when this event is called and then send that to an RPC. But if I look over here, I'm actually removing the player first and then I'm invoking it. Um, so I'm gonna actually just change the order of that so that they aren't removed from the local players yet until after I invoke the, the event. All right, so let's go ahead and see if this wants to compile this time. So we learned that you cannot pass over network connections um, over the network. Or some people already knew this, but yeah. All right, server only, hitting play in the editor. No whammies, no whammies, come on. Client. All right, we didn't get any errors, but, um, oh, it's hidden. All right, so we didn't get any errors, but we didn't get our message either, and that might be okay. Um, I half expected that. So let's go, I'm gonna just go on my other uh, screen here and I'm gonna open a new build, bring it over, and I'm gonna connect this client. All right, still nothing. Um, so that's interesting. I kind of expected to get a message that time. Let's go back to Visual Studio. Classic debugging right here. I know there's breakpoints and things, but um, I, I, whenever it comes to small things like this, I prefer to use just text because breakpoints uh, stop the process. And this just kind of lets it run through so I can see what's going on. Uh, so let's just go here real quick. And I'm gonna hit play, and I already I don't need to rebuild, so I'm gonna uh, run this as a server. And I'm gonna join a client in the build, which you can't see, it's on the left. All right, so this isn't even calling. Did I forget to add the script? I did not forget to add, I mean, I forgot to set the references, but I didn't forget to add the script. Uh, so what's going on, what's going on? Let's take a look. Leaderboard canvas is uh, set. 
I'm listening to the event. Let me just double check a few things. Does this have a network identity? This does not have a network identity. Um, that is why it's not behaving properly because this is a network behavior script, but there is no network identity. Uh, so let me go ahead and hit play. Now that I've added a network identity, I'm going to open a new build, which you again cannot see. It's on my other screen, just joining as a client. All right, so it is actually um, sending this time. So let's go back and it looks like it's removing as well. So let's go ahead and just remove these. We know it's working. All right, so now we're just gonna try the client side real quick. I do need to make a new build because I'm gonna run the build as a server. Okay, now I'm gonna connect the editor as a client. All right, so we got the join message um, for NetID2, which means that it does indeed exist because otherwise it would be zero. Um, so that is that is good. So we know that the NetID is being passed over the server properly. Um, now there is one other thing we have to do, and that is making it so that um, late joiners also have these values because currently how it is right now is you're only going to get the rpc if you are um, a new joiner right so we need to actually do it for late joiners as well uh, so let's see here so the part for getting it to late joiners actually isn't that complicated um, but what is what is going to be the problem is we don't actually remember how I said earlier, we don't actually need to store this on the server because why would the server need to really know? It's just kind of for the user's sake. Well, we actually have to store it on the server. Uh, <laughs> that's because the server needs to know what values to send to new joining players. So let's go ahead and set up this part here and then we'll go from there because we're going to have to, we're going to have to have entries to make this work. So let's go to the leaderboard canvas and um, the content again is just a content object. We're just dragging it in there. And we already have a prefab called uh, player score. I'm going to drag that in there. Now uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to use a private list player score added player scores equals new list player score. So this is a collection of player scores which have been added to content. Uh, so with that said, we have these RPCs where we get the, we basically get the message saying that a player has been added. Now what we need to do is also make a target RPC so that we can send it to new players. Now this is a hint um, as to one way as to uh, send RPC values to late joiners. And that's essentially what we are doing. Now, there is a better way to do this, uh, but it's part of my supporter videos. So I'm not going to show that particular way. I don't want to say it's a better way. I want to say it's a more, um, I guess it's less code, but we need we need this anyway for what we've got going on here. So we're gonna we're gonna go off from what we have here and and use that. But I do have an alternative way that you can send RPC, RPC values to late joiners without having to use events. It's actually very easy. Um, but in this case, we need the events for both, so we're going to keep them. Now, let's see. Uh, first things first is target RPC, private void target um, player connected. Um, What did I make scores? Uints? I think I made them a uint. Let me just check. Oh, I made them an int. Okay. All 
All right. So basically, whenever a new player joins, is we're going to send a target RPC, which will contain uh, the uint of the player, the string name of the player, and the current score of the player. So what I'm going to actually do here is um, totally drawing a blank here. Okay. So we're actually going to go here. So what this is doing is whenever a player joins, this is sending an RPC to all current players telling them that a player has joined. Uh, so what we're going to do in addition to this is we're going to send target RPC to the joining player using the values that are um, in the player score class. So if I go over to the player score class, um, I'm just going to do, I'm going to do public int get score, which is just going to return score. And I will explain why in just a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through every single added players, uh, player scores. And what's basically going on here is that these are scores that have already been added. Um, so they're players that are pre-existing to the player that's joining. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to iterate through those. And now I'm going to do, first I'm going to do this. Not use ver if we don't have to. I mean, you never have to, but. Okay, so I'm going to go through every entry and added player scores. Um, so the first thing I actually need is I have the network identity already. So I do need to get the uh, player name because I'm going to send the net ID, the player name and their current score. So I'm going to do int score equals item dot get score. This is the current score as it is stored on the server. Um, so let's do client instance CI equals client instance dot return client instance using the connection. I'm just going to rename this just so that it makes more sense. I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. And I've already talked about how this works in the past numerous times. Um, it basically retrieves the local player for the object and uh, string name equals CI dot uh, I thought I might not have a reference to it. So let me just check real quick. Okay. So the client instance doesn't actually store a player name reference. That's fine. Um, we're just going to do player name pn equals ci dot get component player name because as i mentioned before um the ci the client instance is basically kind of like a a holder for the player um it has i have my client instance which is basically just a quick way to look up the local player object a respawner which handles the respawning and a namer which handles um naming the player and it's actually called namer not player name so let me just do that Player name is what's on the actual uh, player object. Maybe that's not public. So let me just take a look. Okay, so current name is not public yet. Um, All right, so those of you that were here from my earlier series, we hit a bit of an issue. Now, the current name is only set on the current, uh, it's only set on the client that owns the object, basically. Sorry, I was reading, I was reading someone's question. Um, this is only set on the object of who owns the player, and if their player object exists, so like if their actual character exists, then we're going to take that and we're going to pass, we're going to call set name again on the client, um, which then passes in a command setting a name. So the problem with this is, like I said, it's client only. Um, 
So with that said, it's not actually synced over the network and I just lost my spot. Here we go. So this needs to be, this needs to be networked. Um, I guess I could do it public, rename it using proper naming conventions here, Pascal or Pascal case instead of uh, camel case for a public field. Don't let me catch you using camel case on public fields. I swear to God. <laughs> I mean, no, you can do whatever you want, but uh, it's not ideal. Um, so current name, and now we're going to actually make this a sync. Do I want to make this a sync fair? I'm going to actually undo what I just did. Um, and I'll explain why in a second. This is one downside to sync fairs actually. And I tried to push this to, maybe they did add it. I don't know if they added it or not. Um, they have not added it. Okay, so this is something that I said should be added to sync fairs that um, was not added to sync fairs because no one listens to me. <laughs> but uh, basically what I suggested is that a sync fair should have the ability to not synchronize to owners. And why that would be incredibly useful is because in this example, as the owner of this object, I could set my name locally um, and then I could, <laughs> yeah. And then I could basically, um, set it on the server and the server wouldn't override it locally via delay. Cause you're going to set it locally and you send it to the server and then the server is going to send it back and it's going to overwrite what you have. And that's not always ideal. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename this to, um, local current name, current name for the character on local player. So now we're going to actually make another sync there. Um, I'm actually going to rename this to player. So now I have a uh, sync ver server current name and then string local current name. So this is basically uh, what the player is setting locally. And this is uh, what's stored on the server. So with that said, I can actually maybe save a little bit of code here. Um, so let's go back to my, yeah, let's go back to my player name script. I'm just gonna copy this. I hope this doesn't get too confusing because I know I'm jumping around a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do is basically add this command inside uh, the namer script. And the namer script is, again, on the client instance. So the player does have authority over this, the you know, the local player. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to do um, server current name equals name. And now what we're going to do from here, I wonder if I can, okay, so I'm, I'm kind of thinking a little ahead and I'm not gonna do it because it adds um, complexity. But what I could actually do is I could remove this right here and then just fetch it from the namer script, which is on the client instance. This is on the character and this is on the client instance, which is you know basically the placeholder for the player. I could remove this and fetch it uh, from here, but I'm not going to, because that's going to add a little bit of extra work. Uh, so what I will do here is I'm going to keep, I'm going to take this code here. I believe the current character exists on both server and client. So let me go to that. Oh no, it says for local player only. Um, that's an easy fix though. Just trying to figure out where that's actually set. Okay. So what happens um, with the current character essentially is that 
uh, whenever they're spawned on the server, the server just spawns it and it has a script on it which calls this and it sets the current character. Um, currently spawned character for the player exists on server and client. So it already existed on client using this code we've we've run in the past, um, but we can also set it on server as well by doing um, this current character equals go. Well, that was hard. So now it exists on both the server and the client. Um, so we can now actually use the respawner reference and do if current character doesn't equals no no, which it should not. Um, then we can set the player name. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. I'm starting to think I might have to backtrack on some of this code. This might actually be like a refactor going on, but uh, we're not, not entirely sure yet. Um, so server current name, which is a sync variable be passed to the, um, passed to clients and Need a public method. All right, so basically, what we're doing is we're setting the server current name. Um, which will be a hook. So that's going to actually, um, it's not a hook, sorry, it's a sync fair. So it's gonna all update to clients. And we're going to get the player name on the current character if the current character exists. And we're gonna set the player name, which will also um, synchronize it to the player name script. And the player name script is basically uh, used to show the name on the actual character object, like above it. Um, so this was probably really confusing. I mean, I even got lost myself because I, I, I personally would refactor and get this, get rid of the sync bar on this one. I'm not sure I actually need the local name anymore. Um, so what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to, um, I am going to get rid of the local name. And this is where the client sets the um, name locally, but instead I'm going to actually call the command, passing in the name. So I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to add client to this just so that you know that this is this is basically only being called from the client. And again, this is called on the client whenever their character spawns. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna call set name and then we're going to, actually we're not going to call set name. Give me one sec. I'm gonna stop talking and just look over my code real quick. Because I'm not gonna lie, this is getting messy. I just need to take a moment and just look at it and stop, you know, thinking aloud. I'm almost done. All 
All right. So basically what I did is I got rid of the local player name. Um, whenever you call set name on client, this is anytime you change it inside the name text field, it's going to send the command requesting that it sets that new name. The server will then set that as the current name um, and it's going to call update player name, which if a current character exists, that it's going to fetch the player name script on it and then it's going to set the name to whatever was passed in. And when it does that, the player name syncs that value to all clients because it is a sync fair and that will reflect above their head. Um, and also we have the get server current name, which basically returns the current name for this player as it is um, synced over the network. So with that massive sidetrack done, I apologize. Um, we're going to do string name equals in dot get server current name. Um, cannot be used like a method. Did I forget to add the return? String, get current name, get return, server current name. Why do you hate me? Am I missing something like completely obvious? Oh, I am. So this is, this isn't a method. This is, I actually have it as a property. Um, so I'm just going to change that real quick. Yeah, it was, it was something in my talking that I overlooked. It's actually way harder to code live because when you're trying to explain things, it, it can really overwhelm you and you, you make a lot more mistakes. I don't, I rarely make these kinds of mistakes when I'm offline coding. Okay, um, so back to where we were, leaderboard canvas. We got the score. We got the uh, we got the score from the added players player score script. Um, we got the name from the current name, and now we're going to go ahead and pass that in to um, the joining client. So we're going to do target player connected, uh, passing in the item dot net ID, which is the, the network ID for that particular local player. And we're going to pass in the name. And we're going to pass in the score. Now, the thing is, is this is probably not very efficient because it's, it's being called for every player that's already connected and it's sending that to the new joining client. So if you have like a lot of players connected, this is going like, let's say if you have 50 players connected, it's going to send um, 50 target target calls. So I'd probably bundle that in like a collection or something so you can send it as one. Um, but to keep it simple, I'm going to just go ahead and send it per item. And that won't really matter in our, our demo here. Okay, so I know I went through a lot. Um, I'm probably gonna do some testing. Did anyone have questions while I do some quick testing? Because like I said, I know this was a lot of stuff. Actually, I'm going to wait on the testing, wait for questions because I have to add a little bit more code. Okay, I'm not getting any questions yet, so I'm just going to go ahead and continue. But if you do have a question, um, go ahead and ask, and I will I will stop and answer. Uh, so this is basically a local method add player. This is just going to actually generate the uh, the player score script and an object and add it to our collection or our um, content. Okay, uh, player score equals instantiate uh, prefab and the parent is going to be content. Uh, we're gonna do ps.netid equals netid. ps.netid 
set player name name and uh, we're going to do ps dot add score score so the score is going to start at zero of course um because that's a default property on player score right here and uh let's say a new player joins and someone already has 10 points what it's going to do is it's going to call add player and it's going to say int score 10 it's just going to add 10 onto that zero and it'll be proper um, so that's fine now what we need to do here is under your rpc we're just going to do add player um, net id called on client yeah so we're going to add um, and they don't have a name yet uh, at this time so we're going to do string dot empty we're going to do zero for the score now actually we're just going to do new player it doesn't really matter um, the name's just not set yet for the player so if you want it set ahead of time you should probably you know do that on your own time <laughs> have the player name set beforehand um so also whenever the target gets a connection we're going to do add player net id name score and uh very last all we got to do is under the player left is we're just going to do private void remove player we only need the net id for this uh, so that's going to be here that's going to be remove player net id and i haven't obviously i haven't filled that out yet um just looking over stuff under here when a player disconnects i'm going to also remove the player and when a player is connected i'm also going to add the player this is so this is on the server basically um I'm adding the player on the server and on the client because as I said, when new players join, uh, the server will send the current values to the clients. So all of this setup is basically linking the player names um, and their scores to the leaderboard. And we haven't actually added, we haven't actually added the logic to increase the scores yet, which is going to probably be the easiest part of it all. So um, I do need to do one thing though is I need to do a quick um, check here. If base is server, then return. Um, that way you can't call it on a client host. I'm just gonna do that to all these because it's already going to be executed on the server. So there's no reason to also run it on the client. All right, remove player is gonna be very easy. Um, equals added player scores dot find index x equals X dot net ID equals net ID. A little bit of link here if you don't know what's going on. I'm not going to explain it because link is it's overly it's not really complex, um, but it's powerful. And if you don't have any clue what it is, it's going to take a lot to explain it. Uh, but basically, what this does is it tries to find the index within my added player scores collection where the net ID on that player score is equal to the net ID which I passed in. And if index doesn't equal negative one, meaning if it's found, I'm gonna do added, um, actually I'm going to first do added player scores index dot game object. And I'm actually going to destroy it. And then I'm going to do added player scores dot remove at index. So I'm destroying the object uh, that was added for the player score and then I'm removing it from our collection Removes player score from content. All right, let's go over here uh, Let's see That's set up I know I'm missing something. I, I mean, I, there's no way it's gonna work right away, right? Let's find out. Do a quick build and run. Popped up over here. Server only. Um, hitting play. Joining as a client. 
So I add a new player to zero. Um, that's correct. And the reason you see this here, only one entry and you see this like this, is I assume it's because there's no camera on the server and it's just not updating. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, punfish. All right. So what's going on here is we can see that it changed my name over my character, which is expected. That's great. But it's still showing new player in the uh, player list. So what happens if I open up a new build? I'm just going to actually kind of wiggle back here a little bit. And I'm going to open up a new build and just put this over here and connect. Okay, so clearly something is not working right. I can see Punfish, but I only see one player entry and it doesn't have Punfish's name up there. Um, so clearly, oops, I'm just adding a bunch of characters. <laughs> so clearly something's not working. I expected it to say new player uh, until the name was updated but I also expected this to have both names, so it's probably not adding a player name for itself. Um, although this one did, so something is not going on. I think this is adding a player name for itself, and I think it's not actually adding the player name for the other player. So let's drop off, and um, I exited the client. Let's go back to the code real quick and let's just do um, public did I call the target I did okay so public or debug dot log uh, okay just gonna see if I got that call see what's going on there gonna connect as a client did not get the call so right away I know it's not sending the target RPC um, and again, I don't know if it's actually removing them from the server because it can't, there's no camera, so it might not be updating that list. That's something I will have to look at as well. Um, but right now, we know that the target RPC is not coming through, so let's evaluate what's going on there. Uh, okay, so this is this should be calling. Um, Let's check this. Let's just add in some stuff here. All right, so we're going to uh, close that out. That one's already open still. And let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and uh, run this as server. Nothing on there yet, expected. Okay, so A and zero current players. Um, so it's actually not clearing out, but that's something, that's something else going on. We're not going to worry about that just yet. So it says zero players are currently in the list. That's actually expected um, because the player just joined and they're not yet added to the list. So I'm going to open up a new build and this should say one. It is not saying one. So that's the problem is that new players are not being added to the list. Um, did I forget to add it to the list when I hit when I did the add? I did. I 100% forgot to add it to the list. Okay, that will probably fix that issue. Um, so I generated the new player and I added it to the, the content transform, but I didn't add it to the actual collection of the players. So let's just try again. Yeah, this code that I'm working on now doesn't reflect my tidiness very well uh, because if I were to basically um, hold it up to my standards, the videos would be like six times longer. But yeah, my, my coding has definitely improved a bit since those videos. Um, so, okay, I have a new player that's expected. I'm gonna name this one Punfish. Uh, again, it's not updating that, that's expected. And I'm going to join a new player now, a new client. 
All right. Still not adding. This is, did I do a new build? Did I forget to do a new build? I might have forgot to do a new build. Let me try again. Server, client, random name, starting a new client. Client, why have you forsaken me? Okay, let's, let's run this as the server. See what's going on. I know I'm adding them to the collection. I, I think I'm adding them to the collection. Zero, that's correct. One. All right, so it is, um, it is seeing that there's a player there, but it's not, as we can see, it's not actually adding them. Um, so let's figure out what's going on. I think I added a line that said I got the player whenever the target RPC was received, right? Yeah, so let's just... Net ID is not really important. Let's just do the name for now. And um, let's try again, just see what could be going on here. I wonder if it's like, I think what's going on is it might not be sending the name properly and it's also not adding itself. Oh, it's still not getting the RP, oh my God. Oh, I'm an idiot. So I realized my mistake now. Uh, basically what's going on is in the target RPC, what's happening is because I'm not specifying which connection to go to, it's sending it to the owning connection. And the owning connection is actually the server. Uh, so it's not going to any player. So that makes me a, a complete idiot. Uh, so I'm gonna actually now call the RPC on the player that's supposed to get it. Uh, let's try this again with a new build. You can kind of evaluate what's going wrong based on what parts of your code are being reached and which parts are not being reached. Hey, uh, so the name came through as empty, which is obviously not right, um, but it added itself as well. And that's a server. This is the client and the client's not showing the most, you know, recent name for itself either. So it is getting the names now, but uh, the name's coming through as empty. So what could be going on? Um, well, the only obvious answer is that this is returning empty. I mean, that's, that's the only reason that would happen, right? So let's close, let's get rid of all the debug here and Now I know that the namer script isn't null because if it was null, I'd get a null exception really quick. Um, I do see what the issue is though. What's happening is that the name is in fact null. Um, so it's not pulling the wrong name. The, the mistake I made is that um, this is for sending to new joiners. And what I'm doing is I'm actually, uh, I'm going through every single uh, player score for people that already existed in the game prior to the new joiner. And I'm getting their client instance um, for that pre-existing player. However, as you can see, I'm passing in the connection for the player that just joined. So what I'm doing is every time I'm actually grabbing the client instance for the player that joined instead of the pre-existing players. So not really a hard, um, not really a hard fix at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do uh, if uh, network server dot, actually, sorry, it's um, network identity dot spawned. 
dot try get value, uh, the key is going to be the net ID. So it's item dot net ID, and it's going to be out network identity and I. All right, so what's basically going on now is I'm taking the net ID that's assigned inside the player score. Um, this is the player's net ID, and I'm trying to get their network identity from that net ID. Um, I have a, an error here because I already, I already did this. Uh, so let's see what we have here. I'm basically... Okay. I'm just going to change these. So what I'm doing is if I can find the network identity on the new joining player, um, which it should always exist at this point in time, it's just a sanity check, then I'm going to go through each player that already exists in the game, and I'm going to try and find a network identity for them um, based on their net ID. And they should exist. It should be the client instance. So with that said, I'm now going to do uh, network connection, um, existing player con connection equals uh, existing player net identity dot uh, connection to client. Because this is run on the server, if you keep that in mind. So this is the connection we want to use. And I'm going to go, there we go. going to move that down here all right so now we should be getting the correct um, client instance so let's just do another quick run and let me read the questions here as this builds well you can't actually pass over a connection um, over the network as we just found out earlier in the stream um, so what I'm doing is I'm passing over the network identity for the player and then I'm getting the connection from that network identity. All right, server, uh, client, random name, joining new client. Aha, it's now working. Now, as I said, the uh, new player's name isn't set that's expected even if I change it it's still not being set and it won't be set on the other players either uh, that's a server it won't be set on the other players either so we have to address that you know it's funny because I was like oh leaderboard this isn't going to be that hard wow was I mistaken um yeah so what, you, what we're probably going to need is like something to indicate that whenever the player name changes um Boy, what is a good way to do this? And we can use events. I do enjoy my events. Um, I'm just kind of thinking to myself here. Well, I don't really want to uh, constantly iterate the the class, uh, so I'm going to use events because I don't really want to like use up cycles that aren't necessary. So what I'm going to do is under the the sync ver hook, I'm just going to do an event um, relay dot on name updated dot invoke next passing in the next name. So basically, whenever the server uh, sets a sync ver. 
this will be called and this will also be called passing in a new name um, so with that said what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over to the player score here and i'm going to do a quick private All right, so what we're gonna do is whenever um, whenever this is basically set, and I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do public void set net ID, uint value. And I'm gonna um, comment this out real quick just so I can find the error. There we go. All I did was I just basically changed it to use the method. Um, that way I don't accidentally set it. And if I go back to my player score, uh, I'm just gonna make, I'm gonna keep this public, but it's gonna be public git and private set. Uh, no, you can't do a friend list by default. You'd have to use something like uh, Steam or, or play fab or something else entirely you can definitely do it but you'd have to you'd probably want to use like some kind of third-party software uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set the net id and then i'm going to do um if network identity dot try get dot spawn dot try get value and i literally just did this previously um net id out network identity and i so again, I'm gonna try and get the network identity that belongs to this net ID. And if I fetch, uh, fetch it successfully, I'm gonna do namer equals um, ni.get component namer. And then I'm also going to do namer.relay on name updated. And basically this event's gonna be called uh, whenever the name updates for this particular client instance. And then when that does happen, I can just call uh, set player name, passing in whatever name it was updated to. And like I said, if you know, you know, if you know about events, you should also unsubscribe from events when an object is destroyed. So I'm gonna do uh, private void on destroy. I'm gonna do if namer doesn't equal null, because it could be null potentially if this fails. Uh, it probably will never be, but it could possibly be. Or maybe it goes null um, before the destroy, in which case it wouldn't really matter, but we want to check anyway. Um, so namer.relay on name updated minus equals, and we're just going to take in this right here to unsubscribe from it. Okay. So that should handle the name updating. Let's take a quick look. I honestly didn't expect this to take like an hour and so far 20 minutes just to get a silly leaderboard working. Um, but that just kind of shows you how long things like this can take sometimes. Aha. So it's updating for the current player. And now if I join a new player, it's going to, of course, say new player because the name hasn't been set yet. Uh, if I go back here, also new player, let's go ahead and change this to BBBBB. It's setting locally and it's setting locally there as well. Just to show you Z, 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 Z. Perfect. Okay. So the names are working. Um, any questions? Again, I know that was a lot. Uh, so any questions at all? Okay. 
Um, if you still have a question, please feel free to ask. I actually did a video on Photon's friends list. If you look at my pun two playlist, I think it's near the end. Uh. All right. So one thing that we need to be able to do is we have, um, this is a leaderboard canvas. We don't actually have a way to access these. It's not really, it's not really the end of the world. Um, but we need to be able to change the score at runtime. And right now it is only whenever a player joins that it shows their current score. So I'm gonna do a public void set score. Um, I'm gonna do net, I just trying to, just thinking here. I don't know if this is gonna stick, but this is probably what I'm gonna do. Net ID, um, that's who we're gonna set the score for. Hit value and I'm actually going to change this to add score okay uh, so you see me do this code a bunch of times already I'm going to go to my namer script and I'm just going to go down here nope I lied I lied I'm going to my um, where did I put that under player score okay I'm going to my player score script here and I'm gonna do the whole uh, thing where I try to get the net ID. So I'm gonna go back to my leaderboard canvas. When I add score, I'm gonna try and get the the network identity for the network ID passed in, passed in here. And if successful, um, oh, I'm doing this the hard way. I, I don't have to do this at all actually, sorry. Uh, I'm just gonna copy this line here. This is the line I meant to copy, ignore this. Okay, so I'm already actually storing the player scores locally um, in the player score scripts and that ID is public. So again, I did this before. I'm gonna find the index inside my added player scores where the net ID on the player score equals the one passed in. And then um, if it's found, I'm just going to do added player scores dot add dot sorry, player scores index dot add score passing in value. And I should fix that. Um, so that's relatively easy. Now, the only thing we have to do from there is one, we need to call this, but two, we need to call this. And uh, this is this is actually not like part of a, a singleton or anything like that, meaning there's no reference to it. So I could use um, find object of type leaderboard canvas, for example. I could make it a singleton. I could use direct injection, which I'm not gonna cover right now. Um, there's a number of ways I could do this. Now, what I like to do uh, whenever I'm drafting games is I like to have one, one singleton. Uh, just one and basically what it would be is there'll be like a new object and I'll just for example call it like um, gameplay dependencies for example and I'll have a new script called gameplay dependencies and that will be my singleton and that will have references to like the health canvas the name canvas leaderboard canvas etc um, there's a way to get away from singletons and as I mentioned that's direct injection but that's that's a whole different beast so we're not going to actually cover that um so prepare yourself i'm going to make a new singleton I'm going to be super lazy uh static leaderboard canvas instance um get private set oh it's, it needs to be public public there we go uh singleton instance of the script I'm going to do private void awake uh, instance equals this. I know, shame me, shame. Okay, but that will get us a reference to uh, call this. And like I said, do this however you want. I'm just trying to keep it simple right now. Now we're going to go back to the combat script because that's where the damage is actually dealt and that's where the players take damage, etc. and things like that. Um, so we have this health script here where we basically get the health of the hit player and then we deal damage to it. 
Um, now the health script is actually let me go back to combat. Let me close all this out. The, the health script is actually what checks if the damage is zero and then it respawns it. Um, so logically, that's probably where we increase the score to. Now, um, we can deal damage, but we don't know actually who is doing damage because we don't have anything for that. That's actually really easy to do. Uh, so we're going to do network connection um, attacker con, and we're going to set it to null by default. And now under combat. Um, so this is actually, this is being fired on the server, but it's being fired from the attacking player. So all we got to do is we just got to do base dot connection to client. Um, so whenever we tell the health script to deal damage, we're also going to pass in who the attacker is. And now if I go down to deal damage and, um, okay, so this is actually, this might be confusing because I have attacker con and I have con here. So what this will actually be is owner con for owner connection. Um, so what we're going to do is we need to update the leaderboard that this player has um, taking damage, I suppose. Or rather that they, they got a they got a kill. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my leaderboard script and open it up. And um I don't actually think this needs to be public. It's gonna be private. It's gonna this is will however be public. Public void um kill secured. Okay. So if any of you play games like shooter games or, or PvP games, um, you might hear you might hear a lot of people say, "Oh, you stole my kill! You're a kill stealer!" Blah 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 blah. Well, you know, if you shot them in the face and they died the first time, that wouldn't have happened. Uh, but there's like a joke: instead of KS being kill steal, it's actually kill secured because you're ensuring that the kill has been completed. Um, so I'm gonna call this public void kill secured. Okay, so we're gonna do um, net ID for who secured the kill. Actually, I'm gonna do um, network connection for who um, who made the kill. And who it who is done on doesn't really matter. Um, so let's see, called when an attacker makes a kill. And under help, I'm just going to do uh, leaderboard canvas dot instance dot kill secured passing in the attacker connection because we want to keep it fairly separated separated right we don't need to um, in increase the score on the health script we just want the health script to notify the leaderboard canvas that it happened now uh, I'd probably completely separate that entirely if possible and add like an event to health that I could listen to for when the health hits zero um but again i'm trying to keep this simple so whenever the health is zero i'm just going to call the leaderboard canvas directly and call kill secured uh, now what we got to do is we need to in order to update the score it requires a net id and this is the person that we're updating the score for and this is whatever value we're changing it to that's probably well known by now uh but we don't actually have the net id yet for the attacker because if we're on the combat whenever whenever you deal damage you're passing in the connection to the client not the net id per se and the reason we're not passing in the net id is because as i talked about um, previously is that if you have three different objects that you let's say have ownership over for example on the client then you're going to have three different net ids uh, but the leaderboard canvas is based off from Yeah, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. I didn't mean, mean dependency injection. I apologize. Um, but yeah, basically we need to get the net ID for the local player, which is the client instance, and that's actually pretty easy. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go down to kill secured, and we're gonna do 
client instance ci equals client instance dot return client instance passing in the attacker connection you see me use this a bunch of times it never gets old it's a fantastic um way to use the client instance so i'm gonna do if ci doesn't equals null which it shouldn't i don't see how that would ever happen but in this case i definitely want a sanity check uh we're gonna do uh uint net id equals ci dot net id i actually don't need to do this this is kind of excessive i'm just gonna do add score ci dot net id and then add a score of one so that will actually update the score on the server um, so let me go ahead and just add a server attribute to show you that this was called on the server because um, if you, as you can see, if base is server, then it's going to call the health thing and then you can see deal damage is only done on the server. Therefore, this is also only run on the server. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is under add score, I'm adding a score to the, the client ID, which should be found. There's no reason it shouldn't be found, but we have the check just in case. And after we add the score, we need to update the other players. Um, so that's actually really easy. I'm just going to do private void RPC add score. Um, uint net ID again, int value. And I'm just going to do RPC add score. And again, passing in the net ID and however much to add to the score. And this, of course, is going to be a client RPC because it's being sent to all clients. Add score onto a player for clients. Um, I can actually reuse this code. So what I'm going to do here, if base dot is server, then it's going to send the RPC only if server. And we're going to do if base dot is server on the RPC, then return because of client host. You don't want to end up in an endless loop because uh, if you don't exit this, and then I call add score, passing in net ID and then value. Uh, absolutely going to end up in, a, in an endless loop because if I if I got rid of this for example the RPC is going to call on client host and it's going to call add score and this is going to run and then it's going to say oh this is server let's call RPC add score and then this is going to run and then it's just going to loop over and over and over um, client host can be nasty like that if you're not careful all right what do you say we test this out All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up a, I'm gonna run this as server only. And I have two builds open. Um, one client, I'm gonna do AAAA just to give him a name. And I'm gonna log in another client and I'm gonna give it a name of BBBB. And um, what was my fire key? Okay, my fire key is space. So I'm gonna aim at BBBB. He's gonna take some damage. As you can see, we did that earlier in our previous stream. And let's see if the score works. Here it goes, oh yeah. Check it out, AAA got a point. And BBB actually respawned, but he spawned in the same spot, uh, so you didn't really see it. So if I do it again, there we go, in a respawn, and he has a new score. And if I aim at AAAA here, and if I do this, sweet, everything's working. Uh, let's go ahead and drop one off here and we can see that it removed the score and BBB still has a point as expected. Uh, I'm going to actually start this over and I'm going to run this as a host or, you know, client host. And we're going to try again just to make sure it works for both situations. Okay. Um, so right now I'm shooting the host player from BBBB. BBB got a point. Excellent. Um, going back to this. And is he getting hit? Yeah, he's getting hit. Oh, he spawned on top of me. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, AAA got a hit too. So that's working. Now, there's only one issue left and it's very minor. And I don't think I'm going to cover it uh, because... This is something you can definitely do on your own time. Is you'll notice that whenever I disconnect, that the scores are still there and I hit client again and now they're doubled. 
Uh, that's because I didn't clear out the list. So all you really have to do for that is, um, if I go back to my network manager, getting started network manager, and you're gonna hear me gripe again, um, because what you have to do for that is basically whenever, whenever your client disconnects, uh, so you'd probably override the on client disconnect. You'd want to send an event which doesn't exist by default in mirror. So you'd have to add it and then you can listen to that event for here. You know, I'm just going to do it. It's going to take like two seconds. I'm just going to do it. Event action relay. What was it called? On client disconnect. Was it disconnected or disconnect? Whatever. Dispatched when the client disconnects. I mean, dispatched on client when they disconnect. Okay. Now I'm just going to do uh, relay on client disconnect question mark invoke con the con. I'm not passing in the connection because I don't have that in the action i probably should you don't. i don't actually need it for this but i'm gonna pass it in because that's what it is in the in the actual method all right so i'm gonna go to leaderboard canvas and i'm just gonna go up here uh to where i subscribe to events this is on the server um you would actually need one for both server and client this is so frustrating <laughs> this is so frustrating Okay, so I'm gonna make a new event on um, server stop. I'm trying to remember if that's the right thing. I can probably do this to on on client stop actually. Is there an on? Yeah, I'm gonna actually use this instead because I think this works just the same. Um, so I'm gonna rename this in a second here and I don't need this and I'm just gonna add an event for when the server stops Basically, if the server stops or the client stops, um, you can listen to these events and know when that happens. Uh, so let's go ahead and just get rid of this one here. Put it back. And I'm gonna go to my leaderboard canvas and whether it is client or server, I need to know when this occurs. Um, so I'm gonna do getting started network manager dot relay dot on client stops tab to auto populate. Uh, same thing for on server stop and I'm going to copy these and I need to actually do this private void on destroy as well because like I said make sure you always unsubscribe from your events otherwise bad things happen uh, so I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna make a new method I'm gonna call it um, let me put it down below all this stuff here we go private void clear player scores very simple Um, okay, so all I'm going to do is just for I, uh, player scores dot count added player scores, I dot game object. And I'm just going to wrap that in a destroy. Okay. I do need to check something. No, I don't. Um, so what I did before is I remember how I said we got to make sure we unsubscribe on destroy if that's destroyed and that's that's why I might destroy it randomly. Uh, so we need to make sure we unsubscribe. I'm just trying to really stress the importance of unsubscribing for your events because they will get you if you don't do it. All right. Uh, so on stop server, we're going to just call just what did I just what did I call that method? clear player scores and we're going to do the same thing for on stop client uh that should fix it let's find out real quick 
going to have to make a new quick build. I really thought we were going to get into the AI today, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, so let's see, make a new client. Okay, let's move him around and uh, let's just go ahead and fire a couple shots. Okay, so I got a point. Um, now if I disconnect, everything's still there. I expected to clear out, so let's rejoin. Okay, so like that's just because the camera was gone and it didn't refresh. Although it did still add um, two entries and that's just simply because I forgot to clear the list. So if I actually just go down to here. Okay, so that's it. Um, we now have a functional scoreboard that will update the name according to uh, the name or script on the client instance, which again, I'm just gonna show you real quick. Client instance. We got the respawner, which is responsible for respawning. Very simple. Um, the client instance, which I know I'm recapping this, but I'm just explaining again super quick, uh, which is basically just used to track the client instance or the local player for um, for a connection. And then we have the namer script, which is probably the most complex one of them currently. And it stores the name for the player where the client can uh, set their name and that it then calls a command which sets the name to a sync fair and then it's updated to all players. And when it is updated, it will invoke the event saying it's updated. And that's what the leaderboard canvas listens to when that happens. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. As far as the combat, all we did was we just passed in whoever was dealing damage or whoever fired the shot to the health. And whenever health was zero, we called the leaderboard canvas instance, kill secured, pack, pack, yeah. <laughs> passing in the attacker. And uh, if we go back real quick, what that looks like real fast here is we get the client instance using the attacker connection. That's why I doubled back to show you that. And I can get the net ID from it, which adds a score for that net ID and whatever value. And um, if you recall, or if you're just joining or whatever it may be, uh, player scores are kept or looked up by using the net ID, which um, the score is for. And that net ID again is the client instance object, the local player, it's never destroyed for as long as the player is connected to the server. So any questions? Any questions? I'm gonna check Discord real quick to see if anyone has questions while I wait on YouTube because I, someone might be asking there and I'm just missing it. Okay, I'm not seeing any. Um, looks like we have a question on YouTube. I have active ragdoll player. Uh, I mean, how can handle just transferring main rigid body physics to script or I need... Um, so you're basically wondering how to synchronize a ragdoll. Yeah, you basically have to synchronize uh, the velocity of every single bone. Uh, if you're using client auth, you can use network transform child, for example, to do that. Um, and then just disable the the rigid body on the spectators and server, and that will sync up. But is there another way to do it? No, not really. Um, that is kind of the only way to synchronize ragdolls. It's not really cheap, and that's why most people don't do it. What? Go, what? No, I I can't go back to my refactor after I've refactored because I don't know what I refactored anymore. <laughs> I I changed the the name or stuff basically as I made it so that um, the current name is no longer just client and it's actually done on the server. Um, and the client still calls set name and then it, it calls command set name after you've done that locally on the client and that will set it on the server. 
And uh, what the server will do is it will then update the player name on the spawn character for that player if they have one spawned, and it'll also update the sync var. And of course, once the, the sync var uh, is set, the hook will call on the client, and then the client will call update player name locally, and then they'll dispatch the uh, name was updated event. And currently the only thing listening to the name updated event is the um, leaderboard canvas. And realistically, what I could do, and I didn't do it because I didn't want to make this excessively longer than it already is, is I could get rid of this code entirely where I update the player name on the player if it's spawned and add a new script to the player that just listens for the um, player updated event. And that would definitely be cleaner, uh, definitely better. So if you're looking at that, I would, I would recommend going you know, the event route instead. Uh, no, client instance is entirely to basically hold a um, player. It's a placeholder for a player. So a lot of times when people work with Mirror, the first thing they do is they go, uh, and I did cover this in, I actually covered this like a couple streams back, but a client instance is basically, uh, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to find my object here. So right here, it's as the player prefab and it doesn't actually have like any visuals or anything. It just holds a couple scripts. The actual player is a completely different prefab and most people will just drop the actual player inside the network manager uh, but you can't just destroy your player object because mirror throws a fit so you have to do some fancy like remove player for connection add player for connection things like that and it's just kind of a giant hassle and it's not fun um, another downside to that is that whenever you remove a player for a connection you add a new one and that identity changes it's not really necessarily in the world if your game doesn't depend on it but uh, the client instance always is always present um, and it handles the spawning and removing of the player. So if you do depend on that net ID uh, for the client instance, for example, it will never change. It will always be there until the player disconnects. So if you want to like reference uh, like a, a manager or placeholder for the player, then you can do it by storing the net ID and you could have various scripts that do more things like the respawner on the on this local player client instance holds information about the current spawn player the name or holds information about the name etc uh, so it's basically to encapsulate all that information and make it easily accessible any other questions Wow, this stream has been going for almost two hours. Um, <laughs> let me go to my Trello real quick and, and take off one object leaderboard. I did not expect this to take that long. I really didn't. Um, I'm sorry that I dragged out so long, just kind of necessities. I did fumble around for probably, probably a good 15 or 20 minutes while I had to refactor things too, but that just happens. Uh, I won't be discussing that because that's a about when the host leaves. I'm assuming you're trying to transfer the host. I won't be covering that because that's one that kind of goes against the whole concept of um, server authoritative programming. You really sh shouldn't be playing as a client host. Uh, but more importantly, it's not just that. It's because it's a decent amount of work. Uh, it's not something I can just answer very quickly. Uh, there's someone in the Mara server called Jesus Loves You, and that's actually his username. And he actually did something for transferring client hosts whenever the host disconnects. So if you want more info about that, I would ask him. Looks like next time we'll be doing uh, pick up pet and then the AI pet and then maybe AI enemies. Uh, the whole pick up pet thing is I'm not actually going to like pick up a pet and hold it in my character's hand. Um, Flex Network Transform can do that. Like, uh, for example, I know that 
I know that anytime you ask an Amera server, how do I pick up an object? And then they link you this pick up and drop child object article, which uh, works, but it's not always ideal. Uh, what it basically says is that you take your player and you make um, child objects for the for each like object. You make it a child for the visual and whatnot. And then you just enable and disable those objects as they're quote unquote picked up. But that would require pre-configuring all those objects um, on your player, which is not great, especially if you have multiple prefabs. So um, I made a feature for Flex Network Transform that actually lets you pick up world objects without going through that hassle. They don't have to be bound to your player prefab or anything like that. But that's not what that's about. <laughs> Wow, I got super sidetracked. Um, the pickup pet item is basically going to be handling collision and triggers on the server. Uh, I see a lot of times that people will have a hard time figuring out why they can't run into a collider or why it's being called on both server and client and things like that. Um, so I'm gonna do that and that's gonna be quote unquote picking up a pet item which will actually activate it for that client. And then I'm going to do the, the pet AI and, and so on. Um, lag compensation will not be covered in the stream. These streams, or any of the streams for that matter, the, because the the streams are public and I do have supporter only content, and I actually already have lag compensate a lag compensation tool um, that my supporters have access to, and it's basically a you know it's like a drag and drop. It does require a little bit of configuration, but it's mostly drag and drop. Um, so no, I won't be covering that. It's that tool is also for Raycast, and it's also f there's also another one for um, projectiles that move, and that's actually part of my tutorial series. Um, so lag compensation is part of the project tier, which is the most expensive one, and the tutorial one is only two dollars, and that's for synchronizing non-network projectiles, and um, that basically ensures that they're in the same position on all clients. Uh, regardless of latency and um, I've been using that in another project and it's proven to be very successful and I know a lot of people have had uh, success with it as well and it's actually pretty easy that's like again that's part of the tutorials tier which is only two dollars um, but again that's non-network projectiles and the lag compensation for Raycast is part of the projects tier so entirely different beast By the way, you're probably wondering where I'm, like, what I'm talking about. Um, this is my Trello. This will tell you everything I have um, and everything that's planned. And a lot of stuff has preview videos too. And it also tells you about the Patreons and pricing and discounts and things like that. Um, so if you're at all interested, that's where you'll want to find that information. Oh, um, all right. So if you're already a supporter, you have access to it, especially if it sounds like you're on the project tab. Um, I did update FPS land very recently, like within the last week. So if you got it prior to then, go ahead and download it again. I updated it to use the latest uh, movement code for my server authoritative movement series, uh, the tutorials and projects. So definitely update it if you have not already. Um, also, I don't think I actually updated FPS land to use the newest lag compensation yet, um, which is silly. I probably should update it to use the newest one because it is actually it is actually more accurate than what's in FPS land by a little bit. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a separate demo scene in it for you to configure, and I tell you how to configure for your game and stuff like that. Any other questions? There's no more questions. Um, probably going to disconnect. I don't know what my la latency is for this right now. I think it's, I think it's normal latency. Oh, it is on ultra low, so you should be hearing my responses pretty quickly here.
All right. Uh, no questions. Going once. Going twice. All right. Uh, so I do have a Discord as well. Uh, anyone's welcome to jump on and chat, check it out, etc. There's my Discord. Now, as I said, the stream has been going on for about two hours. So with that said, I'm most definitely going to take a break. I probably won't be on for like another hour or so, but um, this is my username on Discord. You'll find me in the server. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or whatever, please post to my channel, actually, if you have questions or comments, because DMs, I get a lot of DMs throughout the day, and they get buried super, super, super quick. Um, it's a lot easier attracting us on the channel. But all right, uh, thank you very much for watching, and... I'm glad I didn't lose as many people as I thought I did because I know I know that naming thing probably got a little confusing. Uh, but yeah, uh, until next time, I'm going to try and start a stream tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but I'll definitely try and I will schedule it um, two hours in advance roughly, maybe an hour, hour and a half in advance if, if I do. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.